from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go. This is Valley News Live at 6. Horror stories, you hear them all the time. Uh, people running off with your money and you're left empty-handed. Empty, empty the owner of Studs to Rugs in Fargo could possibly face criminal charges following the abrupt closure. The Attorney General's office says it's investigating after multiple people paid the company but say they never got any work done. So far, that total is nearly a quarter of a million dollars. Valley News Team's crime and safety reporter Nicole Johnson spoke with a local contractor who is stepping up to help and explains how you can know who to trust. It began with the Facebook post. Brian Niesmeyer felt bad for those with unfinished work. I've been on the other side of the situation before as well, and I know how it feels. And me being a contractor, I'd certainly like to get people on back on track and um, you know, get their projects finished up and feel better about it. He's offering a deal for those who say studs to rugs left him high and dry. A few other area contractors are doing the same. Find a contractor that you like their work and stick with them. However, that's easier said than done. The Attorney General's office says it's very difficult to protect yourself when hiring a contractor. In fact, it's becoming more difficult to trust them. In the case of studs to rugs in Fargo, the AG's office says they were licensed and bonded and didn't have any complaints filed against them. It's concerning for the industry to have something like this happen and disappointing and, and uh, very unfortunate. The best way to protect yourself is to limit the amount of money you're putting down ask a lot of questions, and keep receipts. You know, there's really no magic pill. Um, it's, it's being smart and taking steps and doing some research. I don't ever take payment before the job is done. Um, sometimes I'll take a little bit down for materials and, and such. For Niesmeyer, it comes down to signing a contract that you've read carefully to protect the customer mm -hmm. and the contractor, too. The way I see it, everybody walks away happy. In Fargo, Nicole Johnson, Valley News Live. The Attorney General's office also says so far they have had a couple people file complaints against studs to rugs, but are expecting to hear from more. They believe the owner took money from customers knowing he couldn't or wouldn't get the work done, which is illegal. We called the owner, Tim Rosine, but haven't heard back. We're taking advantage of this nice day because it'll look a lot different out there tomorrow. Hutch, rain, snow, and wind on the way, right? Yes, and for some areas, a possibility for blizzard-like conditions still does persist. And as we head into the overnight hours, it looks very quiet for this evening. So finish up those outdoor chores and enjoy. Winter storm watch remains in effect for a large portion of our viewing area. Wind will be a, a factor for almost everyone involved with the weakest of the wind gusts to the east thanks to the trees. First thing in the morning, snow starts along the international border and moves into Grand Forks around the 10 o'clock hour into Fargo by the noon hour and the rest of the day the wind will blow with gusts over 50 miles per hour possible zero visibilities and dangerous travel conditions right into the evening and early overnight hours before things start decreasing from northwest to southeast. Snowfall potential with this storm remains around an inch to three inches from Devil's Lake through the Fargo area, three to six inches for a large swath of northwest Minnesota, including Detroit Lakes, isolated locations could see as much as eight inches. That's a lot of first snow. I'll have more details in your hour by hour forecast coming up in a moment. All right, thanks, Hutch. In Jamestown, police are investigating after a man apparently shot himself in the leg with a handgun. Officers were called to a home east of McElroy Park yesterday for a report of a man with a gunshot wound to the leg. The 27 year old had to be flown to a Fargo hospital. Authorities have not released his name. Police say foul play is not suspected, although alcohol may have been a factor. Two people are dead after a crash on I-94 near Valley City early this morning. Authorities say a car driven by a 35-year-old man from Fargo was going the wrong way on I-94 when it collided head-on with a truck driven by a 31-year-old man from Crane Lake, Minnesota. Both drivers were killed. A passenger in the truck was treated for minor injuries. The names of the men killed have not been released yet. The crash remains under investigation. Minnesota Governor Mark Dayton says he'll continue to press to get the funding necessary to protect the state's computer system from hackers. 
The governor got only a fraction of the spending he proposed for technology and cybersecurity upgrades last legislative session, and he plans to push the issue again next year. After speaking to cybersecurity experts, Dayton says computer upgrades are a tough sell when in competition for other needs, such as a rundown bridge or a new college library, and fears it will take something catastrophic to give cybersecurity priority funding. In the past year alone, Minnesota officials have reported finding a data breach in a state park computer, a hacker breaking into a state university computer, and an email scam targeting Minnesota school district officials. State tax figures show how falling agriculture and energy prices are hitting North Dakotans right in the wallet. Figures released to the Associated Press show reported gross income dropped 7.6% in 2016. And the number of people filing dropped by more than 27,000 as oil field workers left the state. An uptick in oil prices has spurred some drilling in western North Dakota. But that's been offset by one of the worst droughts to hit the state in decades. The state tax commissioner says the drought likely will contribute to a third straight year of declining average gross income for residents. A North Dakota town says it once again officially the geographical center of North America and its townspeople have a trademark to back it up. The Rugby Chamber of Commerce and Visitors Bureau announcing that the city has regained the trademark as the geographical center following a year-long legal dispute with another North Dakota town over the matter. The issue came to light last fall when Hanson's Bar, located in Robinson, North Dakota, succeeded in claiming the trademark following a lapse in registration with rugby. A legal team for rugby submitted evidence to the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office last December that the city should retain the trademark. Rugby leadership says that the office approved the trademark and no one opposed it during a standard 30-day period. Now a petition has been filed to have Robinson's trademark canceled. Last week, we spent some time with West Fargo Mayor Mitch Rich Mattern as he got a few pink streaks in his hair. He was changing up his look after raising $3,000 through his Real Men Wear Pink campaign to support the fight against breast cancer. Mattern said if he raised $5,000, he would dye his entire head of hair pink. Well, today, Mayor Mattern reached his goal, and as a man of his word, he is now rocking a new pink do. Mattern himself is a cancer survivor and says Breast Cancer Awareness Month is important because it's almost impossible not to be impacted by this disease in some way. There was quite the dance party outside of Bennett Elementary School in Fargo. While students and staff boogied on the ground, Principal Sarah Schaefer was busting a move on the roof of the school. She did so as a reward to her students for raising 50, that, that's her by the way, $15,000 <laughs> in the school's first annual walkathon. For their part, students walked, jogged, or ran more than a thousand miles. In essence, they covered the distance between here and Phoenix, Arizona. As you saw, Schaefer dressed up as the school's mascot for the occasion. Some smooth moves in that crowd. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Later on Valley News Live at 6, details on Vice President Mike Pence's trip to North Dakota on Friday. Up next, you're going to hear the prominent national speaker who traveled to the FM area for an anti-abortion rally.